folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living, and in this video we're kind of catch you up to date from last weekend. Got a, had a really busy week, so I wasn't able to get that last weekend's video out until this weekend. But um, we're going to tell you about how Brian put together all of our stair spacers and uh, the finishing and the banding of those in this video and actually completed another project as well that was the door headers for the closets and the bathroom so i finished the uh, artwork on those and we're going to get those installed today as well but i uh, hope you guys enjoy the the banding video brian figured out a way to do his own banding without having to buy the machinery or the tool that was 200 dollars to do the banding and the securing of that so uh, he was able to upcycle his uh, log cutting jig. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, this weekend, you know, we're having a little bit of winter weather again, which is kind of funny. Um, you know, it's spring, but spring in the Colorado mountains is evening snow and then daytime sun and then snow, sun, snow, sun, snow, sun. Uh, it's snowing right now and it's sunny. So that's kind of <laughs> the way that we live up here. But um we're also working on some other fun things as well as far as getting the railing on the deck. I know everyone's been waiting to see that happen. So we've got to put in like something temporary right now for the weekend just so we can kind of wrap up the, what we needed to uh, be able to secure our mortgage. But you guys enjoy the video on the log banding and um, hope uh, love to hear what you think about the artwork on the door headers. Oh, it looks like someone's staining. Mm-hmm. Get it done. Get it done. Yeah. After the staining and polyurethane, Brian is taping up the ends of the logs to prepare for an epoxy pour into the cracks. So he's got them all lined up tilted so the cracks are facing up, and he's going to be pouring in epoxy from the top. Uh, initially, it started working, but uh, one challenge that he ran into, uh, the type of tape that he used, the packing tape, did not have the hold that he was hoping for. In fact, uh, the epoxy itself loosened up the tape on a few logs and he had to redo a few sections because the epoxy leaked out. Um, so word to the wise, do not use packing tape if you want to use a solid tape. Um, he ended up swapping it out for metal, um, it wasn't duct tape, but it was uh, the metal flashing tape. And that is really, really sticky and worked really well. Um, and he was able to finish the job with that, reinforce some of the, you just want really good adhesion. And I think there's something about the epoxy itself, a little bit of a solvent to uh, actually uh, unstick the glue from the surface. So watch out for that. But uh, he ended up getting it all done eventually. Yeah, this too leaked pretty badly, but see the puddle there. Oh yeah. Once that sets up and secures the the tape on there, I think it'll be all right. I can pour it again. So you got your. You can see your cracks filled. And over the weekend, I finished up the wood burning on our door headers for the inside uh, closets and bathroom. Uh, this is sped up four times the speed, so you can see uh, it's just um, a, not a fast process. That's why it's taken me three weeks to really finish the design. Uh, but I'll show you guys the finished product at the end here. Uh, I thought it came out really nice. You know, you can trace a design, but once you get all the shading in and that wood burning, it adds a lot of character. So definitely happy with it. So there's three decorated door headers. Uh, this was the first one. This is the one that Brian did the original tracing on. And then, um, then I did all of the uh, wood burning on it. And then I went ahead and did the tracing for the other two. I just tried to put together different elements to make different scenes. I tried to use a different animal in each one and a different combination of treescapes and mountainscapes. And the last one, I think I probably put the most work into as far as combining the mountains and the trees together in a more fluid pattern. And I got the bears in the middle there. So anyway, that was a lot of work. <laughs> Round two. So let's so, explain what's different. So... The tape wasn't working so good. 
And that, all of a sudden I was like, oh, a cock, that might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should have been the first thought when I did this, how I cocked the seams on both sides. You can kind of see it there. Brown. Yeah. I mean, it's brown. So. Yeah. So a little bit of a, a dam. Yep. All right. And uh, so we had first the issue was bad tape. You had. Right, yeah. But... Yeah. We had packing tape, which was crap. I should have said yeah. something yesterday when I saw you putting it all on there. I was like, that's not super sticky other than on to paper. And then I used the mechanical tape for HVAC, the, the metal tape. That works really good. There's definitely some kind of solvent action when you with liquid epoxy, so it probably yeah. is has an. It, yeah, I think it kind of dissolved some of the, because that that mechanical tape is super sticky, so I think it dissolved some of the, the glue on that mm -hmm. HVAC tape. Mm -hmm. So, so um, anyway, the the logs that had leaked previously, you went through and did the silicone the cock, caulking yeah. on the. Yep. Uh, there's a shadow right there. Yeah. There, that's a good angle. Cool. So, filling in those. Yeah, so. So far, so good. <laughs> that one looks good. They don't have to be filled to the brim, they just need to be filled, you know, eighth of an inch from the top. Alright, so today we've got the, uh, the epoxy's all cured. It's cured enough um, that's not sticky at all, so I'm going to start putting the bands on. And uh, I've done one already. Let me show you what it's going to look like. There you go. A couple rivets on it to hold it in place. Let me show you how I get that tight. The, um, the normal technique, there's a, a, a really big tool um, with a big giant clip that goes on first and then you use the tool to um, cinch it up um, but then you've left this big buckle uh, on here and I didn't want that I wanted something a little more uh, streamlined and very uh, clean looking uh, after I'll get some black paint touch that up and uh, you won't even see the rivets there um, but let me show you how I uh, devised a way to um, get that tight without um, without that without that tool which by the way is $120 so what I was able to do is actually recycle the jig that I used for um, making the spacers themselves to try to make them square. And so I uh, actually worked out perfect. I just had to modify it a little bit and then uh, and uh, I'll show you how I did it. So, so here's the jig. So what I did was I added this piece here um, and that's so I can attach my clamp here. And then I added this little piece right there as a stop for the and to hold the the banding uh, in place so uh, let me get to it and show you what I did so right here I am uh, measuring the uh, steel strapping uh, which I got from a place called Uline I think it's Uline.com they specialize in packaging materials anyway so I'm just measuring the circumference here uh, and I ended up getting a uh, standard dimension of 37 inches and then I just uh, uh, did a, a mark on the table. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole with a uh, countersink in it and the end of the strap. I'm going to use one of these little screws, a cabinet type screw, get it as flush as I can. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to decrease the integrity of the strap itself. So it's close enough to within a 32nd of an inch. So. I'm going to wrap it around. I did try it make a mark on my log so there I want them all to be pretty much lined up with each other it'll be off a little bit but now I'm going to center it 
pretty much with my eyeball. So that's my the initial point to hold the strap in place and then my jig is what I use to hold it the rest of the way so let's go show you uh, the next step uh, is to attach my lever to the spacer uh, which will be uh, used to actually tighten up the log um, I'm going to screw it right to the spacer um, but I've got it in the right position so what I do is just draw a line once I get it um, where I think it needs to be I'll draw a line on the log um, and then I'll screw it on afterwards. Um, and then I'll drill a hole in the other end of the strap uh, and I'll show you where that's gonna go. All right, I got my line drawn. Just gonna line it up here like that. Screw it in, oh, wrong one. I'll fix the strapped, the other uh, end to here. All right, now this piece is a little unique in that it's got a knot in it. I'm gonna back my screw. I have to shim it. I need something way bigger than that. And I put my clamp on. Just like that. All right, now I'm going to put the uh, couple rivets right here. And my screw is right there, so I'm going to go right there above it. It's sliding off. Normally I drill both holes, but this one's a little tricky because it's got some irregularities right in the middle. Most of the logs do not have that. Kind of time consuming. Huh? Yeah. Front page of tomorrow's newspaper will feature the Green Hornet. That one's got a big ridge on it, doesn't it? Yeah, it's kind of a pain. But... Not super flat. All right, I 
started preparing the uh, the base of the staircase. Here I'm going to laminate uh, about 13 two by six pieces together. I'm cutting them down to 20 inches long and then uh, five inches wide. And then uh, here I'm gluing them up uh, with some wood glue, spreading out evenly. Are you just leaving it in a big square shape? No, eventually I will uh, turn it into a round piece. Uh, and then the, the the very top of it will be the same diameter as this, this the round part on the, the first stair tread. So it about, it's about nine and seven eighths in diameter. So I'm going to turn that. With the, I'll use a router to uh, make about a one inch uh, long piece on, on the top. And then um, I'll taper it down to the bottom. So yeah, it was definitely a lot of work done last week. You know, behind me here, I've got this, I can't even lift it, the big uh, block that's going to be the base of our stairs. Brian's still going to work to pare that down into more of like a circular shape. He's going to kind of route out some, uh, round off the corners there. So got a little bit of that to work on. And we're going to do the next step before we assemble is doing all the drill pressing. So we're borrowing our neighbor's uh, drill press and we're going to be able to cut holes in our spacers and our stairs. So you guys, I think the next video, you're going to see assembly of these stairs, okay? So <laughs> you got to stay tuned for that. And uh, anyway, got to get to it. Going to get out there and work on the railing today. And uh, anyway, I'd love to hear your comments and uh, what you think about the, uh, the spacers and the cool that tool that Brian sort of finagled for that and uh, the, the door headers. All right, guys, we'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you.